hey there, and welcome back to the 6-5 Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of our team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, we're really glad you're here. In this keynote session, we'll hear from Charles Lamana, Corporate Vice President, Low-Code Platforms from Microsoft. And Charles is going to talk with us today about the low-code revolution that's sweeping corporate America today and how to help your organization be a part of that revolution. I don't know about you, but there aren't many of our clients who aren't interested in all things low-code, no-code. So I can't wait to hear what Charles has to say. Let's go check it out. Thank you for joining today. My name is Charles Lamana, and I'm a Corporate Vice President at Microsoft. I'm going to be talking about the low code revolution and what it means for enterprise application development. Across all of our customers, we're seeing a big fundamental shift, a big change of how enterprise application development is happening. And it covers the full process of what it means to go from ideation to design, to implementation, to deployment, and to servicing. Every aspect is fundamentally being updated and changed because of many broad changes in the industry. And the way we look at this at Microsoft, this big change is due to four big waves that are fundamentally updating and modifying how people think about application development and what it means at their enterprise. Some of these waves are long running changes that have been secular trends for years, and some are much more sudden and much more immediate in the year 2020. But what we're seeing across all four waves is that they build atop one another. On their own, they wouldn't be that disruptive or that transformative, but together, they are changing everything when it comes to enterprise application development. And the first of these four waves is the changing workforce. We can see that 35% of the workforce are now millennials and 75% of the workforce will be millennials by the year 2025. Additionally, 24% of the workforce are Generation Z. Altogether, what this means is that expectations for digital experiences, for applications, web and mobile, are incredibly high. People are used to using applications that are cloud connected, AI enabled as part of their day-to-day -day life on their phone and at home. We need to go make sure that this workforce has their demands and expectations met when they're at work. And what this means is mobile enabled, mobile first, AI first types of experiences. And this digital native workforce will not be satisfied by the hundred click 100 text box, 100 screen applications that most people are used to when it comes to business applications or other line of business systems. They want something more and they want it now. And this can be seen combined with the previous digital transformation initiatives to be driving unprecedented demand for digital experiences. We project that over 500 million new applications will be built in the next five years. This is more applications than, than were built in the last 40 years. Additionally, of these apps, we see that the expectation for mobile experience is front and center for the workforce. And the demand for mobile apps is growing five times faster than a typical IT department can satisfy. On top of that, all of these new applications, all of these new digital experiences are generating an unbelievable amount of data, a large portion of which is unstructured. And we see that over 85% of companies are struggling to analyze and understand this unstructured data. So there's a high demand to understand all the information being created. This together is just bringing an unparalleled number and requests for application experiences. And when we put that 500 million in context, these are applications and data analysis and automations, which took 40 years to build before. And what that means is the tools that we use for the last 40 years are not going to be the same tools that work for us over the next five years. And despite this incredibly fast growing demand with companies which have a strong willingness to go high prof hire professional developers and coders, there aren't enough developers. This is the third wave. No matter how much you want there to be a coder to go satisfy your need, um, go build your applications or understand your data, there just aren't enough developers out there. It's projected that there'll be a million developer shortfall in the United States alone over the coming decade. This is a serious problem for companies of all industries. In fact, for the first time ever, last year in 2019, more developer positions were hired outside of technology in industries like energy, retail, healthcare, financial services 
than were hired in core technology companies. This is a problem that is going to impact each and every company. And we see that with 86% of our customers reporting that they are struggling to hire professional developer uh, skills and resources. So if we think about that, there is a changing workforce, a growing need for digital experiences, but there aren't enough developers. These three things compound together to dr dramatically change what it means to go address enterprise applications. And adding on to this, a more sudden change is the sudden and dramatic economic impact of the COVID-19 crisis. According to the World Bank, the world GDP will decline 5.2% in 2020, and the United States GDP will decline 6.1%. This is across all industries, an immense amount of pressure on enterprises around the world. And it's now projected by the World Bank to be the worst and most severe recession since World War II. What this means is that our customers need to go address their digital needs with the tools, the skills, and the people they already have. They have to be efficient and find ways to get more out of the resources and the investments they've already made. And what that means is big digital transformation projects, which take multiple years and rip and replace core parts of your company, those aren't really going to be as viable anymore. There needs to be snack size, bite size, incremental progress that deliver high results with great ROI if you really want to go address this problem. And against this backdrop, against these four waves, the first three of which are long running, the last one much more sudden, we're seeing a fundamental shift. This is that big change, change I was talking about. And it all roots back to low code development. We can see that low-code development is flourishing and growing at unprecedented rates in the year 2020 um, from Microsoft. And when we talk about low-code, what do we mean? To us, low-code means that you don't have to be a developer, you don't have to be a coder, and you can use skills and application experience you have as a standard information or office worker to get the job done. What that means is if you can use PowerPoint and Excel, then you can be a low-code developer. This is a fundamental reimagining of what development needs. Instead of trying to teach everybody how to write code, we're changing how you develop so it works for everybody. Uh, and that's one of the big shifts that we're seeing across all industries and all spaces is this incredible surge and growth of this different type of development model. This is a tool that's been around and a concept that's been around for quite some time. Uh, low code goes back decades. But the confluence of cloud, digitally native workforce, and expectations like that has made it so low code is transform transforming industries today. Now is that moment where we're really past the breaking point um, and just the way development is being done is gonna fundamentally shift. And that's because low code enables everybody. Fundamentally at its core, low code is saying that you don't have to be a professional developer. You don't have to be a coder. You don't have to be in IT. You can be in marketing, sales, finance, legal, any department, and you can now develop. You now can control your own destiny. It's a complete democratization of application development for truly the first time at a broad worldwide scale. And this is something that people are hungry for. And because we have that workforce, which is a different demographic, which is digitally native, which has only ever lived in a world surrounded by software and technology, we have an incredibly robust workforce in all industries and in all seg segments and all functions and all companies that can go pick up the mantle and start developing using these low code tools. And although we now enable non coders to develop, it's not just about that. Low code also enables something very interesting. Development has now become a team sport. Professional developers and coders and business users can both develop on the same project with the same tools and the same platform and the same data. This is a lot more about a, a lot more than just increasing the workforce of developers. It changes how the business works with software and how it does development. Gone are the days of lengthy requirements documents or specification documents, but instead you can now actually bring together all parts of the company to work on a single solution together. And this produces far better outcomes and is very different than just making more people developers. And this is that low code revolution, the emergence of low code in a cloud native way a workforce which is ready and hungry to embrace it in all functions, even if they aren't coders, and a willingness for a collaborative, innovative development approach which spans coders and business users. And when we look at that, that's what low code really changes fundamentally.
It's not just for developers anymore. Development is accessible for everybody. Business users, IT pros, coders. They all can work together. They all can unlock the digital needs of their company by using a platform um, that supports low-code development. And if we look at Microsoft, our big focus to go lean into this transformation and respond to these four fundamental shifts um, that are driving the need for low-code is with the Microsoft Power Platform. No code, low code, or code first. All are welcome and all can be uh, productive with the Power Platform. No code means if you just like drag and drop on like PowerPoint, that works on Power Platform. Low code means if you want to go use something like Excel where you write formulas a little more sophisticated, that works great in Power Platform. And code first is if you're a coder and you want to go drop in and start writing code, you can still do that on the Power Platform. And this is what enables that development as a team sport. If we look at the Power Platform, there's four major components for Microsoft. The first is Power BI, which is a low code way to do business analytics and um, business intelligence to understand the data you're generating to generate reports and create dashboards. Power Apps, which is a low code way to go build web and mobile applications. If you can use PowerPoint and Excel, you can now build a mobile app uh, with Power Apps. Power Automate, which uses robotic process automation as well as API based automation to automate all parts of your business process and all parts of your workflow to improve efficiency of your existing workforce. And Power Virtual Agent, which is a low code way to go build chatbots, which is AI infused and AI driven because customers and users expect a conversational experience, whether it's from something like Alexa or a chat based experience on your website. But all of this is possible and all of this is enabled inside the Power Platform integrated seamlessly and delivered from Microsoft. And this has been our response years in the making to this growing demand from customers. And what's happened in 2020 with the macroeconomic pressure, and the need to be super agile to respond to it, an explosion of COVID-19 or return to work related needs is that we've seen the power platform adoption accelerate to the fastest levels in its history. Um, so with that, I want to take this chance to thank you again for taking 15 minutes to learn more about the low code revolution. My name is Charles Lamana from Microsoft, and I hope that our conversation around the four big ways which are driving this change, as well as what low code means to our customers and how it changes development um, was interesting and exciting. Thank you.